minute. Stop. <laughs> Stop. Stop. What's one piece of advice you'd give an actor a hundred years from now who is cast as Megan? She can call me a hundred years from now. Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel, Ilani of Barbados. I am reviewing the Variety Magazine article. I forgot all about this, but let's go through this together, okay? <laughs> So just to explain this, this is the way you can listen to the article. Variety Magazine gives you that option and then you can follow it in the text as well. So I'm just letting you know what's going on here. You will not hear Meghan Markle's voice. You're only going to hear this automated recording. Okay. For most of her public life as the Duchess of Sussex, Meghan has been described as many things. Disingenuous, calculating, determined, relatable, even Diana-like. Uh oh, the last two. <laughs> Relatable? Nobody said that. Those last two, Relatable and Diana-like, were definitely added in by Meghan Markle. Let's not play. But spend a day with her, and you'll witness a side that the public hasn't seen, the nerdy American mom. This is her new origin story arc that she's going on, where I'm just a nerdy mom. I'm really harmless. I just don't know how she's reinventing herself suddenly. And this Variety magazine cover looks like somebody who's ascending into heaven and glory. And I have this other magazine here where she <laughs> was trying to talk about herself being a private person in 2021. And then she turns around and does all these business deals. So it doesn't seem like a genuine feeling that she ever had in her whole life. Megan talks about how she loves to watch Jeopardy and do Wordle in bed with a glass of wine. Watching Jeopardy and doing Wordle is not going to make you a nerd <laughs> in these nowadays times. In these nowadays times when children are writing code and speaking Mandarin, if you're not doing that, you are not a nerd. Goodbye! <laughs> Her son's favorite song, a track about the Tyrannosaurus Rex from Ask the Storybots and talks enthusiastically about Beyonce, specifically, how cozy is her favorite song from the new album? And what about all the photos you've seen of her with that guarded smile? At mm -mm. the shoot, she couldn't have been more at ease as she shook the hand of it. I mean, maybe Princess Diana had that shy guarded smile, but she's such a fucking psycho to actually say that about herself that's not her it's somebody else your life is not you your life is somebody else's and you're pretend i can't talk every crew member stylist and photographer as assistant she shrugged off the pop singers of contemporary radio in favor of her own 1970s road trip playlist she addressed questions about the past few years head on Okay, I just wanted to say one more thing um i cannot believe this article is already so bad i did not expect it sorry she burst out laughing at the drop of a hat, almost like a princess in a Hollywood movie. Joy. That's really it. It's everything that we can work toward for ourselves, our friends, our kids, those around us, that would feel so good. <laughs> and we do feel joyful. <laughs> Megan was set to be honored in the 2020... No, I'm laughing because... <laughs> I'm laughing because even though it's an automated voice, you can still hear the cringe in what she's saying. It's like, have you ever been in a situation where you're saying constantly, that goes without saying, that goes without saying, that goes without saying? You don't have to define why she feels like she wants to have joy in her life. Following the official period of mourning, Megan agrees to sit again for a lengthy discussion about her road to the present. She worries that any comments about the queen or her in-laws will be a distraction from continued mourning but presses on to celebrate the icon. Why would that be though? Why would it be a distraction from mourning if you're only going to uplift the memory of Queen Elizabeth? Why would it distract from that? The only way it could distract from that is if you're gonna say negative, horrible things like you did on Oprah. Remember that? She grows animated talking about the warmth and support she received from the thousands of citizens she interacted with during her time in the UK. Not to mention the two significant content deals she and Prince Harry struck with streaming giants Netflix and Spotify. The two young children, Archie Harrison, three, and Lilibet Diana, one, at the center of the Sussex household the singular mission behind Archwell, and how tenaciously she has fought to build the life and company of her dreams. Okay, so you have nothing to say about the queen then. I thought she was gonna talk about the warmth that she received from the queen, but she's talking about the public when she went back to the queen's funeral. The, the queen's funeral, she received this warmth and adoration. She Megan. 
received it. The world has been mourning the loss of Queen Elizabeth. How has this time been? There's been such an outpouring of love and support. I'm really grateful that I was able to be with my husband to support him, especially during that time. What's so beautiful is to look at the legacy that his grandmother was able to leave on so many fronts. The fact that you're saying that you were so grateful to be there with your husband, you weren't though. You caused a lot of confusion. You made him miss her last breath, okay? By creating all this confusion about how you have to come to and you not go, he not going unless you going and you're not ready to go yet. And how insane for you to just recreate that. You know, I think that's what is so interesting about her is that most people have those moments when they're like okay i'm accountable for what i did i said this at this time and only one person heard it my mom or my best friend or whatever but i have to stand by that literally the whole world watched her do foolishness and she's just changed she has histrionic personality disorder isn't that what it is where you like inflate or conflate the history of events to what you think it is even though like everyone saw it this is really hard this is really hard for her so when you do like these netflix things and these podcasts and whatever th part of the contract is that you have to do press so everyone's saying like why is she suddenly coming out here doing every article everything like after her podcast drops she has to then do press it's part of her contract and also for netflix as part of her contract to drum up hype over her you might remember monique when she did not like the deal that she was given from um netflix and so she decided to not do the press and she got completely slated for that you can't just do that you can't just have a deal with netflix and just not do the press okay certainly in terms of female leadership she is the most shining example of what that looks like i feel deep gratitude to have been able to spend time with her and get to know her it's been a complicated time but my husband, ever the optimist, said, now she's reunited with her husband. Has anything come up for you in your relationship with the queen since her passing? Wait, what? I've reflected on that first official engagement that I had with her. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> Has anything come up for you in your relationship with the queen since her passing? Okay. How special that felt. I feel fortunate. And I continue to be proud to have had a nice warmth with the matriarch of the family. How have you processed this loss as a family? In big moments in life, you get a lot of perspective. It makes you wonder what you want to focus your energy on. <laughs> right now, we feel energized and excited about all of the things we've been building toward. So you're not mourning. You're not grieving. Got it. So focused on our foundation. So much of the what is your oh the philanthropic space oh she means foundation by like the r12 thing because i never take that seriously so when she said foundation i was like what are you talking about oh yes r12 okay good you've done two major interviews since returning to america one with oprah winfrey and the other with new york magazine which some found to be snarky well what has it been like to open up about your life now well, let's hope that this one is not snarky. The In New York story was intended to support archetypes and focus on our projects. I've had some time to reflect on it. And? Part of me is just really trusting, really open. That's how I move in the world. I have to remember that I don't... Ever no, you're just trusting that everyone should like you the way you like yourself. Because you have no self-awareness. I wouldn't call that trusting. I would call that... Uh, uh, conceit and so you reflect on it thinking like what happened there i thought i was fine why didn't they think i was fine something's wrong with this world that's how megan is thinking right I never want to become so jaded that that piece of me goes away so despite any of those things onward <laughs> <laughs> so i did a hell of a bad interview but onwards and upwards we keep on going who cares no explanation no accountability no saying well you know i really had a bad day that day like nothing no, she's giving she's giving very much i don't care what anyone thinks of me part of what i'm doing with archetypes is looking at the nuances around the women who come on the show i'm not a journalist but i want a <laughs> candid real conversation with we know you're not a journalist and we know that you are making those women 
look even worse than the stereotypes that people may have had of them because you're not highlighting the best things about them. Megan is pretending to be so well versed in everything and she doesn't know anything and that's why she objectifies the the same guest that she has on her show that she's trying to prove there should be no stereotypes about she's the one putting the stereotypes in the listener's head i'm talking to some really textured colorful layered dynamic women with strong histories and that comes with a lot of pieces you can choose to include or not i choose to include something that i feel is fair to them and also uplifting and something we can all learn from can I just say something? I'm sorry to inter- interrupt her foolishness that she's talking. These pictures in this magazine are giving me, I took a million pictures to get one good one because they're so stiff and they're so staged that you know she had to take a million. But I want to say something. Her toe is really long. Like her second toe is really long. I have a long second toe too. And <laughs> in Lilibet's picture, hold on. She has a super long second toe as well. That's definitely her baby, honey. <laughs> so you know what they say in the Caribbean? When you have a second toe that, that's, that is that long, you're going to rule your husband. Just saying. <laughs> what were the days like after the Oprah interview aired on TV before an audience of 18 million people? Even before the interview, I hadn't been out because I was so pregnant. One thing I really remember was Gloria Steinem's birthday, a few days after it aired. I really Who wanted she? to say- Gloria Steinem is a feminist, just like she declares that Harry is her husband. Celebrate her at what I thought was just going to be a small and intimate birthday lunch. Why? Why do you want to say what the woman's birthday is going to be like? I envisioned it being us eating sandwiches in this cottage she was staying at why instead it was an extravaganza did she get an invitation though because i feel like an invitation would have said like casual elegant you know what i mean did she actually get an invitation or did she get crash by the way as she deserves oh she deserves a good oh oh megan said megan said gloria steinem deserved a good party so she deserves it honey she is going to tell you who deserves what in life walking into a room alone is never easy for me and I remember feeling a bit uncomfortable. You should have been. But before I could let my uncertainty linger, Pamela Adlon came up to me and greeted me with such warmth and kindness. She's just name dropping to the point where I have to Google everybody she's talking about. So who's Pamela Adlon now? She won a primetime Emmy Award. She's an American actress, comedian, director, producer, and screenwriter. Apparently, she's worthy of a name drop. <laughs> she toured me around the room, and at every turn, more generosity and love was felt. Maybe it's just a testament to the kind of company Glow keeps. Glow? Wait a minute. <laughs> it was Glow. Also, Gloria Steinem is Glow now. And everybody loved you that you were there without an invitation at Glow's party. Social climbing at its best. To ensure I felt so welcomed. It's like they knew exactly what I needed to feel in that moment. They knew me. It meant and still means so very much to me. It's this Gloria Steinem huge icons birthday party but everyone knew what i needed at that time because i'm megan markle <laughs> what can we expect from liz garba's docuseries on you and your husband it's nice to be able to trust someone with our story a seasoned director whose work i've long admired even if it means it may not be the way we would have told it what but that's not why we're telling it <laughs> wait we're trusting our story to someone else and that means it will go through their lens it's okay. interesting. My husband has never worked in this industry. So that sounds like a disclaimer. We're trusting someone, but it's not the way we would have told it. I think that what happens, looking in from the outside, when there is this much noise, is that you become dehumanized. But if you remember that someone is a human being, then you don't treat them, talk about them, look at them the same way. My hope for archetypes is but- that <laughs> thinking, oh. But... When do you ever not look at somebody as a human? Why do you have to remind yourself that this person you're talking to is a human? I'm just gonna put this in here. The objectification might be coming from you, Meghan Markle, and how you felt about how these women were being portrayed. Whoopi Goldberg. Who has been the most challenging interview so far? Aha, I know this. I spoke to Paris Hilton last week, beginning that I was the most nervous about her interview. I was embarrassed to admit it, 
But I've had a judgment about her that's based on everything I've seen, and I don't like to come from a place of judgment. But I also didn't grow up pretty. So then don't. I saw Paris Hilton in a party in Miami. I think it was Halloween actually around the same time uh, when I was Miss Barbados. And I just remember thinking she looks exactly how she looks on The Simple Life, on camera. She has really amazing legs <laughs> and she seemed very quiet and humble. I was just thinking she looks really good, <laughs> you know? You didn't grow up pretty. I grew up as the smart one. Here we go again. What I ended up thinking about when I thought about Paris was envy and judgment, two of the most dangerous things. But then you hear about her trauma and her life and her buying into this persona. Ultimately, I told her, I'm really sorry that I judged you. I wanted her to be safe and comfortable. I told her I wasn't looking for a gotcha moment. I don't think she said all of that. Not in the podcast I listened to. <laughs> I want a got you moment where we get you. Well, I think we got Paris, but we didn't really get Megan. This episode is not framed as a defense of Paris. It's the humanization of her. And that's true for everybody. I don't care what situation you're in. If a 16-year-old boy or girl or a woman in the workplace feels objectified or dehumanized because their character is misrepresented, I hope everyone listening with an open mind could come away thinking, could I just actually consider for a second that there's a person there? I think so. I've done a lot of internal work. I'm from California. It's in the water. Whether you're exercising or meditating, you're sometimes asked to picture a person that makes you angry. You think about them. Wait. You get it all out. And then you're asked to think about them as a six-year-old child. Can you forgive them? That is how I contextually approach that. What does Hollywood as a concept in a business mean to you? I mean, seriously? That's what meditation is like. I've done meditation. I don't think you think of like the most hated person in your life and then you try to think of them in a not hated scenario. The industry has shifted quite a bit since I was a part of it. How long has it been? I left Suits right after the 100th episode in 2018. I didn't think I'd ever be in the entertainment industry again. You're not. But the entire culture has changed. Streamers have changed things. Uh -huh. The ability to create zeitgeist moments like we had in the 90s. Oh, where everyone going. would tune in at the same time for a show or gather for one moment. That doesn't happen anymore. Would you ever consider going back to acting? No. I'm done. I guess never say never. But my intention is to absolutely not. So I don't know why people are reporting that like she was going back to acting. Because I think she says unequivocally no. <laughs> Bonnie Hammer was my mentor. Oh, name drop. Very early on in Suits, she took me under her wing, and that was invaluable to me. Talk about a woman who can balance being a mom. A mom! So the industry, and having a very strong sense of self. I would sit at breakfast with her, studying what she ordered, hanging on her every word. I think Meghan Markle is somebody who is very obsessed with people, and almost stalker-like, and almost frightening. So much of how my husband and I see things <sighs> is through our love story. Oh! I think that's what people around the world connected to, especially with our wedding. People love yeah. love. That's the wedding that you denied meant anything to you because you said it was just a show for the royal family and really you had this private wedding with the Archbishop of Canterbury who he had to come out here and say that that's not true. Those are love stories. Always have to be so serious. Like a good rom-com, don't we miss them? I TV. I so much. Mm. I've probably watched When Harry Met Sally a million times. Really? And all the Julia Roberts rom-coms. <laughs> we need to see those again. Is it odd, as an actor, to know that other actors will probably play you in the future? I haven't given that much thought, to be honest. It's all weird. Is you it? have to compartmentalize. Wait, Anyone this is interesting. Anyone talking about me or casting an actor to play me. That will be a caricature of me that has been created for a business that makes people a lot of money. What's one piece of advice you'd given after 100 years from now who is cast as Megan? I hope that in preparing for that role, she finds the softness and the playfulness and the laughter. The silliness. I just hope she finds the dimensions. Also, she can call- Wait a minute! Stop! 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 
What's one piece of advice you'd give an actor a hundred years from now who is cast as Megan? She can call me a hundred years from now. This interview is null and void <laughs> at this point. But anyway, let's finish it up because we've come this far, so. I saw my picture in the yearbook that a friend sent me the other day. For your seat, your because daughter, you don't have a picture that you stare at every day from the yearbook, of course not. To choose a quote to accompany the picture. At 17, I chose Eleanor Roosevelt saying, women are like tea bags. They don't realize how strong they are until they're in hot water. Tea bags? <laughs> okay. Let me stop, let me stop, let me stop. Behave yourself, Leilani. My husband is on a 24-hour time zone where half of your life is waking up as the other half... Literally just say Harry. By the way, he's not doing anything in the UK, so there's no reason for him to be waking up for that time zone. Or maybe he's just like trying to find a way to get away from her <laughs> at this point. Where half of your life is waking up while the other half is going to sleep. I thought she was going to say, while one half of your marriage is going to sleep while the other half is waking up. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and that would have made a lot more sense to me. <laughs> also, my husband's favorite is In and Out. There's one at the halfway point between LA and our neck of the woods. It's really fun to go through the drive through and surprise them. They know our order. <laughs> She's not trying to spend very much time with her children because every time she goes off on these press things or like nobody even know why things that she goes on, the, the children are never there. Even the funeral, they were not there. Whereas all of the rest of the royal family had their toddlers and so on there. But I want to say something else. Why is she trying to get in and out to sponsor her? By the way, they really notice us and they really know us so well because they know our order. It's all self-ingratiating. It's all really crazy that she can't express herself without doing that it'd be so nice if she could express herself by just saying you know my life is good and i'm living it and i don't want anything from anybody that's why we left and you know but this is completely opposite so that's that and um, thank you so much for watching me and i will see you next week tuesday for the review of that podcast i would really like to see what that brings for us and thank you so much for watching and lots of love to you Love you. Bye. <laughs> Why does the world change? Mm -hmm. Why does the world